Elm is not a object-oriented language. Uh, it doesn't have classes, it doesn't have interfaces, there's no inheritance, nothing like that. Um, but Elm does have types, it does have a type system. And in Elm, types help you uh, describe the shape of a piece of data, and they constrain the possible uh, options the data can be in. So let's take a look. Um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna make some uh, variables over here in main. So when I say name equals Ryan, I'm using the string type. So um, uh, strings have infinite possibilities, right? It could be Ryan, it could be Ryan with two ends, three ends, four ends, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the reason that it's um, the reason that strings have an infinite set of possibilities is because uh, you know as long as my computer can store it. Uh, I can represent uh, infinite characters. It's a list of characters. Uh, if we changed uh, over to using uh, a char, um, there's not infinite chars, right? There is a limit to how many uh, chars are defined in like the uh, the UTF, you know, spec UTF-16, UTF-8, all that stuff. But there's a lot. There's a whole lot. Uh, a lot more states uh, are possible um, with characters than usually we have in our program. So there's a lot of different options with chars. Uh, a lot of different options, like two to the 31 or something like that, two to the 32 options with integers, even more with floats. Um, so when we're trying to constrain a program using these basic data types, we don't have a lot of uh, control over things. Um, is online equals true. But notice that uh, Boolean just has two things we have to check. If we can handle the condition, for true and handle this with false, we've handled every possible outcome with Booleans, which means that um, there's no third surprise value that we're going to run into that's going to crash our program or cause unexpected output. So why why is uh, why do Booleans have this special property and and why are Booleans capital? We saw this when we learned about them. Why isn't it lowercase t, uh, your lowercase f for false and lowercase t for true? And the answer to that is because Booleans uh, are the first example of custom types that we've seen uh, from Elm. So in today's video, we're going to learn about what custom types are, how we can make our own, and how they help us constrain the possible options uh, that our program is going to use. Um, so uh, let's make a new module here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave main as is. I'm going to do a new module, and I'm just going to save this as color.elm. So we have a new module called color. I'm just going to expose everything just to keep things simple for now. And I'm going to write our first custom type. Um, so here's what the syntax looks like. I'm going to say type. This is a keyword just like module type color equals red or blue or green. All right, so the pipes mean or. Um, and then uh, everything here. These are the different possible values that a color type can be. Um, so if I call this colors, just for clarity, uh, I'm gonna rename this to colors. And just I'm delete this old module, just so we can kind of talk about these two things without mixing them up. Uh, here, what I've done is I've made uh, a colors module that has a color type. And the color can be red, it can be blue, it can be green. Um, so if I'm trying to pick my favorite color, I can type red. Uh, let's open up the terminal and actually understand kind of what's going on here. So I'm going to do import color. This is uh, an Elm REPL that we have running. Looks like uh, I made the mistake of importing a color instead of the module colors. So here, when I do colors.red, I uh, am going to get uh, colors.color. Oh, let me let me expose everything here. Exposing everything. So when I type in high, I get a string. When I type in true, I get a boolean. And when I type in red, I get a color. And color is something that I got to make up. So color is a custom type. Uh, it can be red, it can be blue, it can be green. Um, but when I'm using strings, this is a valid string. If I do this, this is not a valid variant, and we're able to use the Elm compiler to get really nice, clear error messages. So um, rather than using a string to represent favorite color, if we switch over to use these custom types, uh, we get you know typo protection. But we also make it so that when we're handling, uh, when we write code that handles a color type, 
uh, we're able to uh, check every single case. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's make a function called two hex color. It's going to take in a color and we're going to come back to using that case expression uh, that we learned about in the conditionals section where we can say in the case that the color is red, I am going to use hex code FF0000. And then I'm going to kind of copy this and we're going to do uh, blue and green. I realized that as I define this, RGB is, is usually seen like this. Um, but for some reason, I always do red, blue, green. <laughs> Something different about my brain. All right, so red, that's green. And then this is blue. So you remember how we used to have to have this underscore case uh, to handle like the default? So in a switch case, you'd have the, the default keyword. In Elm, you have this underscore. Here, I don't know what color we have, right? Um, so uh, if I add a underscore here, uh, I actually get an error. And it says the fourth pattern is redundant because there's no value with the shape. Uh, all, the, all the previous patterns handle that value. So I don't need this with Elm. When I, use a, um, when I use a case expression and I cover all the cases, that's it. I don't need to have any fallback uh, fall through cases. So I'm going to import colors and then I'm going to say colors dot to hex color. That is a function that takes in a color and returns a string. And that's what we're seeing here in the output. So if I give it red, that works. If I give it blue, that works. And if I give it green, that works. And there's no other values that I can give it. I can't try to sneak it, you know, null, or I can't give it one, two, three. Um, it's going to let me know that I gave it a number, uh, but I needed to give it a color. So a color is a special thing that we made. The cool thing with colors is uh, when we add new colors, the Elm compiler lets us know all the places in our code that would crash if we didn't handle those new colors. Um, so here, if I import this module, we're going to see the full error message again. So let's re-import colors and see what it has to say. So uh, on line 9 through 12, it says, uh, this case does not have branches for all possibilities. So we added yellow and it's saying, hey, what am I going to do? What is the hex color for yellow? You never told me. Um, so rather than just kind of like letting you call that function and then, you know, running an issue, it's going to make us define the hex code for yellow. And I believe that is just everything but blue. And so now that we've handled it, it's happy. And so we can import colors. We can say colors dot to hex color uh, of yellow. And then we get our string. Um, so how are these different than like enums or something that you might have used in another language? Uh, they're really similar to enums. Um, the uh, difference is that uh, types or these custom types in Elm can also hold on to data. So I'm going to just kind of format this uh, so we can see each type one line at a time. So a color can be red, green, blue, or yellow, or maybe you want to have a custom color and we want to provide our own string value. So what that could look like is, let's save this. Maybe that custom color has some hex string that we just want to return directly. So what you're able to do with the case expression is you're able to access the variables uh, that you define on a color. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm just going to remind us that yellow doesn't exist anymore. We can clean it up helps keep our code nice and concise. But what I can do now is I can say colors.custom. So before I had red, that was a color. Before I had blue, it's a color. So I added custom. Is custom a color? Let's take a look. So it is custom a color. Custom is actually a function that takes in a string and then it returns a color. So as soon as you say custom, and then I have my hex code, 312, you know, 35, whatever, you know, if we want to do it like this. Now we have our own color here. Um, and the issue is, of course, that, you know, you can type whatever you want in here. <laughs> I can say my custom color is banana. <laughs> so it's not quite safe. Uh, but that's the power of these custom types. You can, you can give it um, 
you know, your own data uh, payloads and uh, you can make it so that uh, this module validates the, the custom colors. We're going to, we're going to come back to that at the end. Um, but it's not just for things like colors. If you have like a, you know, a user, maybe uh, user.elm, you might have type user that is either, you know, signed in and it has an email or, you know, you're signed out, maybe you're an anonymous user. So when I import um, users, expose everything here. So we have access to everything. Uh, signed out is a user value. See, we have now this user type and then signed in is a function that takes in this record and returns a user. So as soon as we give it something with an email, Brian at elm.land, now we have a valid user back. Take a look at that. We got the colon user. Um, so functions allow us to do that. Um, the only thing I wanted to mention is uh, we've been using these exposing keywords. Um, and I was telling you that exposing dot dot exposes everything. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what it looks like when we just expose uh, the user type and how that's different from if we said color dot dot. All right, so this is another special syntax when you're working with custom types. Uh, and what user, uh, what this is saying is expose the user type, but not signed in, not signed out. Don't expose the, vari the variance that uh, I'm allowed to use to create user. So we can expose the type, the shape, um, but we, we aren't exposing the values. And here we're saying expose color, but also here we're saying expose red, expose green, expose blue, expose custom. And now um, this, 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 and this are exposed, uh, but favorite color and two hex color are not exposed. Uh, so when we come over here, we say import user, uh, we can say, you know, fave color is color.red. And we can say, you know, uh, the user, uh, user dot, you know, signed out. Oops, colors. Uh, this is not going to be valid because user does not expose a signed out variant. Um, so we're not able, able to, to use that. And that is because we didn't do this. So something to keep in mind when you're exposing values, if you want to have access to those variants, um, you're going to want to uh, use this dot dot notation here and say, hey, I'm okay with exposing uh, all, the, all the values that are used to create users. Um, uh, another note is uh, the capitalization of these is kind of weird. So everything we've been learning so far, um, favorite color to hex color, those have all been lowercase because they are functions and they are, are values. When we work with types and modules, you're going to notice that those are always capitalized. Um, uh, and when we work with custom uh, custom type variants, those are also going to be capitalized. But these are actually values, um, so you know it might make more sense to to think that you know lowercase red is a function. But that was something that tripped me up. Um, custom type variants uh, are the only types of things uh, in Elm that are capitalized and are also values that you can use inside of like a variable expression. You know, name is red. That's kind of a weird name. Anyway, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, the big, the big takeaway here is that, uh, color is a shape, uh, red, green, blue, and custom. Those are values. Uh, in the case of custom, it's actually a function that takes in a string, returns a color, and that's the introduction to, um, custom types. Uh, so in the next one, uh, we're going to go into, uh, adding type variables. Uh, and making uh, more advanced custom types. So I'll see you there.